Yep, perfect. Well, that was fun. Yeah, hello everybody and welcome back to this week's addicted fishing video today we have a very special guest and we are doing one of my very favorite and probably the most and talked about new technique for trout fishing in the pacific northwest it's going to be a good episode stick around come and find out oh it's dead sexy i'm telling you it's that. dead sexy be over there on that edge oh, they're going to be boy. up top in that fast stuff and they're going to be guess what sprawled yeah. out yeah. They're gonna be there. Here. Yes. Oh, this is beautiful. Pick your spot, man. They're, okay. yeah. they're around in the edge here, back over there. They're all right, right in the middle here. They're over there. Wow. Yeah. So, Bill Herzog, my friend behind me, guys, is one of the most iconic and well rounded fishermen in, in the Northwest, honestly. He's written tons of books. He's given lots of knowledge to the fishing community. And I'm lucky enough to call him a friend. So, he's taking me out on his home river today. And we're in search. A very, very beautiful fish. So, without further ado, let's find them. Oh, they're hungry. They told me. Oh, he's on! Oh, first down. Give me a boy. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, Little no. Oh, don't get out of the water. Little. No. no. Nobody. Oh, no. no. <laughs> hey, both of you. Oh, hey, Oda. Go. Go. Middle. Look how fat and pretty those are. Wow. That's that gorgeous. thing is not hungry. No, but he, uh, he is hungry. Holy Christ. On your way. Ow. Boy, you got teeth, son. Woohoo! First one of the morning. Yeah, what a hog, good. too. That's the small end of the ones you catch without jigs in here. Because they're fish eaters. He was right in tight. He was really close. The kind of fishing that we're doing here today guys is with these sculpin jigs and this is the method that bill taught me a few years ago and uh, i was really really excited to come and fish with them again but what these things are is they're basically emulating a sculpin which is a type of fish that you find in any sort of body of water uh, whether it be a lake or river basically anywhere in the world and they're a little we will put a little picture of it in the, in the corner here they're like a little little bottom dweller basically and trout like these big trout that we're catching now these big cutthroat survive and get this big off of eating other fish they're not only bug eaters especially this time of year they'll be feeding on other fish like these sculpin so that's why it works so good and that's why we're catching these big ones so let's find another one yeah it is they gotta just be suicidal <laughs> Oh, suicidal trout? Yeah, I saw them in Seattle back in the day. <laughs> oh, God, no! Got him! Oh, God, he ripped it! Oh, he ripped it hard! Right out of my hand! Oh, that's a nice one. Tiny bit bigger than the last one. Wow! Oh, God, he's chunkamunka! Chunkamunka ding dong! Oh, God, does he have two jigs in his mouth? Nope, just one. Just mine. Oh, that is so awesome, everybody. My favorite way to catch trout on twitching jigs. And this man right here, I'm not gonna say he invented it, but he was there. That's for darn sure. It's important to handle these trout with care, especially if you're anywhere in the Northwest or now anywhere in the world you're catching these wild, wild trout in general are always worth taking the utmost amount of care with, making sure they stay in the water. Oh my God, it's a football. This isn't even a trout, it's a football. Little. Look at this specimen of a creature. Wow! <laughs> wow. Thank you, brother. And thank you, fish. Mwah. See you later. Woohoo! Well, that's better than coffee right there.
fade all the all the way. Yeah. Never never monofilament. Oh, uh, you can feel you can feel them change their mind with braid. I like to say, right? Yeah. I mean, you're it's fishing in high depth, right? You you can actually feel the weight of the jig move with braid yeah. with a super sensitive rod. Um, I like to run 10 pound test braid. Mm -hmm. I believe it, I think it breaks way heavier than that, but I like yep. a braid that I can see, like I see, use the light orange, I use the white, something that you can follow visually so you know exactly where your stuff is. Like there might be a log sitting out there. Yeah. And if you're using a braid you can't see, you'll throw it out, you go, I wonder if I got close enough. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. I did. Crack, or you've missed it by this much that's and not the, know it. I, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is having a fishing line you can't see, which is the great part about this enforcer braid, but it makes, and same with this white line, this is just the spider wire. Oh, that's uh, it's, it's, uh, Power Pro. Power Pro? Yeah, it's just white Power Pro. But the thing about that high vis line is you can see exactly where you're fishing. You can pinpoint a rock, having good glasses is another key. Yeah, Being yeah. able to have some sort of polarization in your glasses to see the structure is key because these fish, they're predatory. They're using structure to hunt and hide. So and let's talk about the jigs now. Okay, how about the bumper we put on? Oh, yep, yeah, yeah, bumper. Okay, the, you can use mono and mono is fine because I believe these fish, when they see that thing moving, they are focused on that. You could probably use bright yellow bailing wire right to it and catch fish. Right. But I run uh, fluorocarbon just because we fish very clear water. Mm -hmm. These fish may be pressured a little bit. and you, Anything you can do to make your presence not known, yeah. even better. I'll run a 10-pound 10, 10 fluorocarbon on the 10-pound. Yep. And just unit knot them together and, and with a just a plain knot on the jig, nothing special. Yep. And even if you guys can't tie that uni knot or you're not good at tying that that um, that blood knot or that Alberta knot or whatever, I always say tie the one you're best at. And if, and if not, a little swivel in between, just a small barrel swivel works wonders. You bet. In, in getting just that little bit. I like to go about six feet of bumpers. Is that what you usually well, like? That, yeah. Six to ten. Six, yeah. So what my buddy does, he cannot tie a unit knot, can't do anything else. So he puts a little tiny number 10 swivel on there. Mm -hmm and runs about two and a half feet of liter, so yep. it's still enough that he can cast. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it works pretty Just good. Just enough to hide it from the fish. Right. Now the bread and butter, mm. the meat and potatoes, if you will. Yeah. My, the scrum diddly umptuouses. I would say 95% of my fishing is done with an eight ounce jig. Okay. Because I don't want something heavier that gets to the bottom too quick, but yet I don't want something so light like a 16th that won't Never get down. Never get down there. I want it to sink just fast enough and re and react just fast enough when I'm moving an eighth ounce seems to be about perfect and it also matches the size of the dinner yeah uh, the sculpin they're eating in here are two and a half to almost I've had them burp up six inch sculpin so I think I could tie them even larger right and probably do just as well but uh, these are what three three and a half inches yeah at and least. That's, that's that's standard the issue. three finger rule yeah and these are quarter ounce and uh, when I can't find what I want they have gamma katsu hooks on them one hot gamma katsu hooks on them. one that one that I'd like to use too a lot when I'm tying my jigs is the addicted uh, the steelhead worm jigs Ooh. that we have work yeah. really well really tough shank recommend clipping those barbs especially if you're in an area with right, wild right. trout uh -huh. uh, but they got the little worm keeper on there works really good for kind of securing your knot and everything when you're tying the jig uh, but the Gamagatsu jig heads or I, I may I may I make these. Uh, they, oh, they, these are split shot. Gotcha. And I just pinch split shot on there, pinch it on there, and that's a nail polish, real fancy paint. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We're all learning things yeah, here. You should see my room. It looks like a like a like a nail salon. Yeah. Tables full of all these colors. Nail polish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Where's Bill? Oh, he's out sniffing paint. So let's talk about the colors a little bit. I know. I, I, what I've noticed is something you and I were just talking about was that there's a very specific base of colors, kind of almost specific to region. Right, right. Some lakes and stuff have different colored sculpin. You can do the research when you go to those lakes. I'm sure yeah. the species of the National Forest Service or whatever else, whoever's regulating the lake will be able to tell you what species are in there. But the browns, the, the darker greens, the blacks, yeah. are definitely the ones that I've always gone to. That is what you've taught me. Yeah, I've, I've always thought to use uh, contrast. Yeah. Because somewhere in there, is what they're eating. Okay, they're eating olive, they're eating light browns, they're eating brown, brown, light brown, maybe even white somewhere in there yeah, somewhere. Yep. But if I just go any, if I use, you can see all the layers I use, I even put a little red in there, looks like a gill plate. I put them pretty fancy. This is not yeah, necessary, yeah. but I like to do this. But I do believe, put some contrast in there, do a different colored head, then your main body, then your tail, then all one, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. you're gonna match that, and the contrast, the fish can see better, and it looks more natural in the water. Yeah. And definitely I've found too, if you look at a picture of a sculpin, like a natural one, they're very thick in the head, mm -hmm. skinny in the tail. Yep. So having that big neck and that big body around just below the head, just below your jig head, I think is key on that right, tie. Right, absolutely. Which is again, something I'll learn from you. Yeah, yeah, but see, you can tell, just look at that one, for example. Look at, look at the head, 
Just this yep. big white. Really head. is this exact shape of a sculpin right there. Mm -hmm. And similar color. Almost exactly. Well, everybody, I hope you guys learned something from the pro here, from the master himself. Again, I've made quite a few of these twitching videos and they're all credited to this man right here. So thanks again for the lesson and let's go find us a couple more fish. That's a great idea. You gotta turn your steelhead brain off in here. Yep. They lay all the way down in the to the brain. Gotcha. Just have to throw it down a little more and just just and swing it around. Got him. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Didn't even twitch it. Oh god, that's a big one. That's even bigger than the last one. Still working me. Little's excited. Odabug's shaking. Oh god, that's a good one. Oh boy. That's a good one. Big old hook nose on him. <laughs> oh, big old buck. Oh, what a pretty fish. Mm. Look at that. That shoot tick. <laughs> Look at the there you go. There's your Look tick at crop. that fish. There's your jig trout. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's all stomach. Yep. Oh, no head. Fish. Wow, I'm gonna keep George, it in the water. Congratulations. Brother, thank you. you know what, <laughs> what a beautiful, wow. beautiful, look at the spots on it. Oh, what a gorgeous trout, man. I love his mouth. Oh. Just a good looking, what healthy, a healthy gorgeous, fish. Gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna let this gorgeous guy go. Fish. Get a hook out of him there, gently. Look at that, look at that. Buddy. Oh, solid, he's not done with us. Solid 17, 18 inches. Brother. Woo! How's the song go? It's only just begun, man. <laughs> wow, what a fish. <laughs> gotta let the nerves wear off of that one. I got goosebumps. That was one of the prettiest trout I've ever caught in my life. All right, we're to the glory hole. You can see here where I want to start. It's a good way to read a hole as you walk up to it, guys. You look out here in the river, you can see how we can see underneath that surface of the water. You can see those boulders, but then all of a sudden there's a section where you can't see the bottom. And there's that swift drop off right there. That's where a lot of the bigger trout are gonna be. And basically the best feeding land. Trout are a species that, that sit in a feeding land, sometimes won't move 100 yards up and down river in, in a month. They'll sit in that area, especially if that food's coming to them, they're opportunists. So those fish will be sitting on that little predatory ledge and behind a perfect rock and just nibbling and just eating. You watch any underwater footage of trout, they'll sit in one spot and they just eat all day long. That's how they get so big and that's how they survive all year long. So walking up to a spot like this, I'm gonna try to avoid the shallow stuff. I'm gonna go right for that little cutoff. Let's see if it pays off. There he is. Oh, little guy. Little guy. Woo, got my heart going though. Little rainbow, not our desired species. Perfect, perfect little example of a rainbow. Very, very pretty fish. A nice open jig hanging out of his mouth. Little's not impressed. See you later, buddy. Stuff right there, big girl fish. Eat that multicolored jig we just talked about. Look at the spots. I think beautiful too. Look at that. How's that, folks? That way. Oh! Instant. Did a whole oh, got him. Got him. Great. Oh! oh he He's the only guy who jumped over the log. He's over the log. Oda, get out of there. Little, get out of there. Oh God, he's got me all wrapped up in this stuff. Go, go, good girl. Oh my God, this is absolute mayhem. The that thing cleared nice, the log, nice threw the wire. That's a sick rainbow. Yeah, I thought so. Big I looked at the rainbow. Rainbow, ready? I'm gonna lift. Oda, look out. Hold still, hold still, hold still. Oh, that was awesome. Talk about log jamming. 
<laughs> he jumped <laughs> over the log. <laughs> Literally. Jumped cleared over the, log. the dang log. You got him? Yep, got him. <laughs> that was acrobatic if I've ever seen it. Look at that beautiful rainbow. Crazy looking cool spots on its belly. That was awesome. Did you get that? Did no, you, uh, no, no. I saw him with my eyes as I was turning that way. Wow. What a beautiful fish. So for those of you who missed that, I hooked that fish right here. He chased it instantly as it hit the water, hooked the fish, jumped over between the cables, through the log, into the mess of dog, and into our hands. That was awesome. If I let snakes or bears stop me from going fishing in my life, I would have never gone to some of the best places I've ever gone. The trick is also when you're doing this, unplug your steelhead brain. You're thinking, okay, they're gonna be here, here, and here. Well, no trout will go in really shallow water as long as they're comfortable. And if he can be, he can be in a foot of water and you'll twitch through it and get a really big fish and you think, how did that happen? Well, they're not steelhead. It's hard to unplug steelhead brain when you're doing this. Okay, I just made a long presentation with not a lot of line out. I kept perfect angle the whole time. So if I got a bite, which I should have, it would have been easy. Got the hook and play. Come on. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> yes, that's a rainbow. Beautiful fat wild trout. Come on, baby. Ooh, okay, okay. All right, yeah, yeah. I appreciate the effort. I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure this is probably what this is when it has not one. Look how fat they are this year. They're just so fat now. <laughs> beauty. Really beautiful trout. <laughs> How about this way? That is the beautiful part and the coolest part about these jigs, everybody, is they really do target the big fish. That's one thing that Bill taught me and that I saw the first time we ever even fished together with these things. He caught the biggest red side trout I'd ever seen. He's a little cut to the clip of that fish. Tight against the bank over there. Okay, now you can start slowing down. We got good now. I'm gonna put some plugs out while you guys fish. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, yeah. What's up, oh, big boy? It's you. Yo, oh, yeah. oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That thing is giant. And he's awake. He's got friends. He's got friends. <laughs> yeah, friends. <laughs> Ooh, la, la. <laughs> hey, what the hell is that? That's a steelhead. Or is that a trout? What's going on? It's a big rainbow. That is running away. Wow. Size of this cat, huh? Oh, done it. Wow. Is that beautiful That's or what? A donkey. Wow. Is that beautiful or what, huh? Look at that. Look at the spots. Look at the spots Yo, on that. Look at that freaking yeah, yeah. Pass them in. Can you awesome? Look Holy at that. crap! That is a real red side trout right yes, there. It is. Pride of the away. West. Yeah. Holy moly, man. Give me in sponge gums here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a donkey. That is the biggest, nicest they get here. Isn't that gorgeous? Here? Crazy, He's man? got friends, let's just like him too. Next wow, everybody, we had to get rid of that fish. Woo! We wanted to get him back in the water. You can see the, the bank's all frozen here. It's really cold, so we don't want to keep those things out of the water. But yeah. boys, yeah. that is what we came ah! for. <laughs> That's good stuff. Wow, that was a big trout yeah. on the twitching jig. Comment below with what you guys think of that because that was one of the coolest fish I've ever seen caught on the coolest method. Whew. But so far today, we've been filming a little bit. We actually filmed the morning for Safe Issue. We're actually on a four day road trip out here, uh, filming a Safe Issue video and filming addictive videos along the way. So if you guys want to see the rest of this trip kind of in depth and behind the scenes and some of the meals that we've been eating and some of the other fish that we've been catching, go check it out. The link is in the description below. Still got a good tail out here.
but it is pretty amazing how big some of these trout are getting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap on an absolutely epic trout fishing video with my man, Mr. Herzog. I want to see the comments below and what you thought of today's technique. Again, it's obviously one of my very favorite new ways to fish. You guys have been seeing me blow it up all over the place on this channel um, because it's freaking awesome and it's well worth trying and it's just a fun sport. It's a fun sport to be able to go and tie your own lures like this. There's nowhere you can really buy these things. There's some custom manufacturers out there, different jig makers that might be able to tie you a sculpting pattern. Uh, but it's fun to go out and get the materials, tie it yourself and go out and have fun chasing these awesome, awesome trout. If you guys want to see more fun videos like you saw here today, go up here and click the link to the next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and you can be the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. You all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.